In one of my recent videos, I was answering a question for Earl Cliff, who asked about stopping audio on a slide. And I misunderstood him. I think what he was looking for was not just the ability to stop triggered audio or slide audio, but more importantly, to do so on a question slide. So I thought I would address that today. Uh, so let's take a look at the solution that I've come up with for him. And I do want to emphasize that this is just one of many possible solutions. There could be many actual ways to do this. This is just what I chose. So first off, I want to emphasize that because some of my navigation controls are going to be hidden on this slide until the question has been submitted, I've actually put a click box. I generally don't use these that often. But the purpose of this click box is just simply to pause the slide, uh, f allowing for the user to complete the full interaction before moving on to the next slide. Also, too, one of the things that you're going to have to do on this particular instance um, is to have a slide reset on entry um, advanced action. So when I look at the slide itself and go over to my properties panel, uh, on enter, I'm executing advanced actions and I'm resetting the slide on entry. Essentially what I'm doing is returning all of the objects that I may have manipulated by using them uh, back to their original state or back to their original visibility or in the cases of several variables, back to their initial values. Let me just cover off what, what makes up this multiple choice interaction so you understand what's actually in that advanced action. So the very first thing I did before anything else was to create four variables. These variables, their purpose is to keep track of which button I've selected as my answer to this multiple choice question. And I've simply called those variable or VAR underscore answer one, two, three, and four and I set an initial value of zero. In other words, nothing is selected to begin with. Uh, as users click on these buttons, it will change the value to, from zero to one. But I'll show that in greater detail later. The other thing too is we've got um, these different captions that are, that are going to appear on the screen. Now, part of the requirement that uh, Earl Cliff had was that this needs to be a scorable quiz question. So not just a knowledge check, but a final quiz question that actually contributes to the score. Now, when you make a custom um, multiple choice question, your instinct might be to assign a valuable or a reporting ca characteristic to the correct answer itself. And that actually would be a mistake for a couple of reasons. Um, in this case, what I've done is I've actually assigned a score to the next button on the correct caption group. And that's something I want to point out as well. These captions are grouped objects for the incorrect and the correct captions that include the navigation to the next slide. So if I get the question incorrect and I click on the next button, I'm then brought to the next slide without contributing to the score. In other words, I get zero points. But if I get the question correct, uh, the navigation control itself actually contributes to the score. And you can see here, I'm including it in the quiz. And let's say we'll give it a point uh, value of 10. And this will add it to the, the total there. You could also click on report answers and have it uh, be part of your um, LMS's interaction report, if you wish. Um, so that's basically it. So we have the incomplete caption with no navigation controls, the correct caption with a scorable navigation control, and the incorrect caption with a navigation control with no contribution to the quiz score. So let's take a look in greater detail. So let's let's start off with that reset slide on entry. Because of course you want to be able to give users the ability to get to the end of the, the course and possibly retake the quiz. So if they're going to return to the slide at a later time, uh, we want to make sure that we're resetting all of the settings of this slide. So let's look at how we do that. So I'm just going to move this over to the side here so we can see the advanced action, but also I can point out the different objects on screen. 
So I have uh, the four buttons, Jean Chrétien, Paul Martin, Stephen Harper, and Justin Trudeau. These are all politicians, and the correct answer is the last one, Justin Trudeau. Uh, if this is a second attempt at this slide, we want to reset these buttons, because that's what they are. They're actually smart shapes being used as buttons, back to their normal state, because they would have previously been selected, and uh, when the user hits submit, uh, they would have been uh, disabled. Uh, so we want to make sure they're returned back to normal. So they're changing the state of answer one, two, three, and four back to normal. The other state is called selected in this case. The other thing we want to do is we want to enable those buttons so that the user can click them again. And the reason we do this is because during the submit process, I do disable the button so the user can't change their answer once they've locked it in. The other thing I want to do is because on a previous attempt, there may be a caption still displayed on this slide. So we're going to hide those captions, hide the correct group, hide the incorrect group, and then hide the incomplete message. And that's basically there, again, just for the occasion where users might be retaking this slide or navigating back to this slide. And of course, there could be reasons why you wouldn't want to reset this, but I'll leave that up to you. I just wanted to include that um, as a reminder to those who want to be able to give users a second chance at this slide. So the next uh, set of advanced actions all occur with the clicking of any of these smart shape buttons. So let's use the Jean Chrétien uh, example here. That's one of the wrong answers. And, um, you know, there's a variable associated with each one of these. And we'll be able to see those uh, being manipulated in the advanced action. So let's take a look here. So if you recall, um, one of the requirements was that we wanted to be able to um, stop triggered audio as well as slide audio. Uh, and in fact, before I go into the advanced action, let's just quickly go to uh, the options tab for the Jean Chrétien button. And this would be true of the other three buttons as well. You'll notice that I've checked off stop slide audio. So I don't really know what type of audio uh, Earl Cliff is referring to. It could be slide audio, which is quite possibly the narration for the slide. Maybe he has a button on this page that plays an audio clip for users to listen to and, and make a choice uh, with the multiple choice question. Uh, so we want to make sure we're killing all, all types of audio that could possibly be pay played. So what I'm doing here is I'm stopping the slide audio, but in my advanced action, the very first thing we're doing as well is stopping triggered audio. So if there was a button on the slide that was playing back an audio clip that perhaps the users need to analyze, we want to stop that as well. The other thing too is that it's very possible that we're selecting Jean Chrétien after may, maybe making a previous selection. So if, uh, or trying to hit submit with no answer selected. So we want to hide the incomplete message if it happens to be displayed. We're also going to change the state of all of these buttons. So we're going to change the state of the button that's been clicked to the selected state. And let me exit from this for a moment and just show you what that looks like. Very simply, I just changed the background to green and changed the, the font color to white so that you could determine which one you've selected when you click on one of those buttons. So let's go back to the advanced action. So we're changing the state of answer one to selected. And in the event that one of the previous buttons had already been clicked on, let's make sure that they've been changed back to normal as well. So change the state of answer two to normal, answer three to normal, and answer four to normal. And I'm gonna reset the values of the variables associated with Paul Martin, Stephen Harper, and Justin Trudeau back to zero, or in this case, variable underscore answer two, three, and four back to zero in the event that I made a preliminary selection before making the Jean Chrétien selected selection. So let's close that. And similarly, there's a very similar advanced action for the other three buttons. The only difference is that the second for the Paul Martin button, 
the second button is made selected and the others are normal and the variable associated with Paul Martin is made uh, given a value of one and answers one, three, and four are assigned uh, to zero. Same thing for the third option and the fourth option. So once you've made the selection, the next thing the user is going to do is click on the submit button. Let's take a look at the advanced actions associated with, or the advanced action associated with the submit button. Uh, but here's the, uh, the conditional action. Uh, the others that we were looking at were just standard advanced actions. This is a conditional advanced action. And it's also a conditional advanced action that has several different decision layers or different scenarios that we need to look at and make a decision on. So the first decision point that we're going to look at is the incomplete situation. So if, remember those variables to keep track of which buttons have been selected, we're going to look at those. If variable underscore answer one, two, three, and four are all equal to zero, which means the user hasn't made a selection at all, and they hit submit, we want to show the incomplete message. And that will allow the user then to make another choice and, uh, and go from there. Let's take a look at one of the answers here. So if variable answer one is equal to one, in other words, I've selected Jean Chrétien, I'm going to disable all four of those buttons. So they will not be able to click another choice. And I'm going to show the incorrect group. And from there, of course, the only thing the users can do is click next and continue with the rest of the quiz um, because they'll be locked out from making any changes here. But also they'll receive a score for this question of zero points. Now, if we go to answer two, uh, similarly, if uh, answer two is equal to one, same scenario. Answer three, Again, variable answer three is equal to one. Same thing, we're locking out those, those answers and showing the incorrect group. But of course, if they choose answer four, which is the correct answer, Justin Trudeau, we go to this final decision uh, called answer four, and it's a little bit different. It's gonna say variable answer four is equal to one. We're still gonna disable the buttons. We don't want them to make any changes, but instead we're gonna show the correct caption group which includes that next button that has a score of 10 points. And that's pretty much it. From there, of course, we would save our advanced action and we're ready to test it out. So let's just do a preview of this in an HTML5 browser and see how it looks. So here's the first time on this slide. Who was elected Prime Minister of Canada in 2015? Well, let's make no selection first and see if the incomplete message works. There we go. So this is incomplete. Please make a selection before continuing. So now let's choose an incorrect answer. We'll choose Jean Chrétien. He was not elected Prime Minister of Canada in 2015. I'll hit submit. And it says, of course, incorrect. Click the right arrow button or press Y to continue. And of course, you would need to assign a shortcut key for Y to allow that to work. That's there and useful for accessibility purposes. So I'll click there. And of course, I get to my final quiz uh, results slide. It says, sorry, you failed. The maximum score was 10. I got zero, zero percent. Let's retake that quiz. So now this is the second time we've been on this slide. Notice that the buttons are available to click and none of the captions are displayed. So again, that on slide entry, it's reset everything back to normal. Uh, again, if there was some audio playing in the background or if I clicked a button that had some audio assigned to it, clicking any one of these buttons will stop that audio from continuing and allow me to make a a better choice or, or a decision at this point. I'm going to go with a better choice being Justin Trudeau. We know that's the correct answer. We'll hit submit. I get the correct caption. And of course, if I click on the next button at this point, I now go to my quiz results slide. It says, congratulations, you passed the quiz. I scored 10 out of 10. I got 100%.
If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.